co-founder of Lowry's, Lawrence Frank, the late Lawrence Frank, was probably one of the one of the greatest marketing minds of all time. Also, in the real world, the practical world of actually, you know, coming up with ideas and doing things. And where he excelled more than anyone I've ever seen is in the concept of how do I make everything we do so visible to the customer that they talk about it with their friends, they talk about it at the cocktail party, they talk about it at the barbecue. How can I make ordinary things so visible to them that it adds to the marketing, the word of mouth, and whatever? Now, have, how many of you have been to Larry's the Prime Rib? And if you haven't been to Larry's the Prime Rib, of course it's famous for Prime Rib that's served on a silver cart that's actually rolled out and the meat is carved right in front of you. And there's a spinning salad bowl that they spin and toss right in front of you. All these different things that they're doing, that's what they're famous for. But that's not what I'm going to talk to you about. I'm going to talk to you about a cup of coffee. How in the world do you turn a cup of coffee served at the end of a dinner into a merchandising and marketing phenomenon? How do you do it? As with everything else that Lowry's did, everything had to be quality. They wanted always excellent quality. And so they didn't want to leave that to the, they didn't want the cup of coffee to be any less quality than, than the rest of the meal you were having. They thought that was important. So he went out and he bought one of the finest brands of Mocha Java coffee. Then he learned about coffee and realized that the water has to be in a certain temperature. There's a certain proper way for it to be brewed. So he bought special equipment to control the temperature and for the proper brewing of this coffee. Then he learned that coffee should never ever be held more than 20 minutes. Is that coffee still on over there? <laughs> <laughs> Two hours or so. Yeah, it, I'm thinking of the Bolu wine uh, uh, commercial. We, we sell no wine before it's time. We serve no coffee until it's been aged for three, yeah. three hours or more, right? <laughs> uh, so he learned that 20 minutes was the maximum limit that you could have coffee heated before the chemical composition within coffee started to break down. And of course, we know what that tastes like. So now he's got to have temperature controlled, special equipment, and he decides we're throwing out any coffee that is 20 minutes old, meaning that we've got to have two urns, and every 10 minutes we brew the second urn so that every 20 minutes we have a fresh urn and we pour out the old. Where is this happening in the restaurant? It's, it's in the back room. It's behind a wall. He had to hire a full-time person just to run this coffee station. So this full-time person is doing all of these things just so that he can serve a good cup of coffee at the end of your prime rib meal. You have your meal. You've had your dessert. There's your coffee. You're sitting there. You drink the cup of coffee. You say to him, hmm, well, that's a good cup of coffee, right? And then it just, that's it. Mm. Other people, hey, that's a pretty good cup of coffee. And that's the end of it, isn't it? If it's a good cup of coffee at the end of the meal. But Lawrence said to himself, they don't know what we're doing back there. They don't understand all that we did just to give them that cup of coffee. So he went out and he bought a very large Chinese gong. It's an eight foot wide Chinese gong. He hung it from the ceiling right above the coffee station. And then he gave a very large mallet to the guy making the coffee. And he says, all you have to do is 20 minutes comes by, you got the new pot of coffee, you just hit that thing with everything you got. That's all you got to do. Real easy. The 20 minutes comes by, he pours out the old, the new coffee's ready, he no. takes it and he goes, wham! And throughout the entire 300 seat dining room, you could hear this, yawn, 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 yawn. Now, if you're sitting in the restaurant, you're dining, and all of a sudden you hear this, bong, 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 what are you going to do? What, 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 what was that? Oh, sir, that's our coffee maker, letting us know that a fresh pot of our special mocha java coffee has just been finished. We never serve coffee more than 20 minutes old. We pour it out, and we always have a fresh pot every 20 minutes. That's what the gong signifies. Every server was taught exactly the same phrase every single time, and every single customer that had not been in the restaurant before always asked every single time the gong went off. Guess what they were talking about the next day in the office? Sunday at the barbecue? 
He got people to spread word of mouth about a prime rib restaurant because of how he served coffee. And the cart, and the spending salad bowl, and of course, what he did is he created five or six different things that people could tell stories about the restaurant dining there. The result of doing this is that for over 50 years, going almost up to the 19, probably 19, late 1970s, they were founded in 1923, they served capacity crowds and they never advertised. I've been telling that story for over 30 years before groups. And time and time again, I've had business people tell me that they remember the gong because it, it always takes them back to what can I do in my business? Where's my gongs? What gongs do you have that you could be creating and hitting that make your own value, the value you already have, the stuff that you are spending so much time and money doing, and make it more visible to the customer in a way that stands out? What I'm challenging you here to think about is the invisible things to the customer are things that are visible, but they put them on autopilot. And sometimes just changing the way we do it, changing the way we communicate it, changing the way we interact with the customer and interrelate with them, we can alter their perceptions of value by making things more visible to them in a new way.